you know, when it seems as if life is spinning out of control, and that is something that every single person will experience at some point, some point in your life, it can sometimes mistakenly feel as if God is against you. Sometimes when life is spinning out of control, it can literally feel as if God has a personal vendetta against you. In this episode of the Midweek Refill, I want to share something so powerful with you in part three to help you remember this, that there is peace available in his arms. This is the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Littman, and I'm excited to share this week's teaching with you. Make sure you share like, give it a thumbs up, and do subscribe. I'll be right back to tell you how there's peace in his arms right after this. And welcome back to session three of our series. We've been talking about finding peace when life is out of control. And in session three, we're going to be sharing about finding peace in his arms. You know, when life is spinning out of control, it can feel as if God's hand is against us. It can totally feel like the wrath of God is weighing down upon us and that all heaven has turned against us. Well, when you read the 40th chapter of Isaiah, it sort of gives us a sense of comfort because there we see God begin to speak comforting words when life was spinning out of control for the people of Israel. In fact, when you read the book of Isaiah, it's often been compared to or categorized as a miniature Bible. Because the Bible contains 66 books, with 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New. Likewise, the book of Isaiah contains 66 chapters. The 39 books of the Old Testament sort of focus in a bit more on the wrath of God, sin, and God's penalty for the unrighteousness of mankind. There are, of course, prophecies in the Old Testament that foreshadow and foretell of the coming of Christ who would reconcile us back to God as mankind. The first 40 chapters or so of the book of Isaiah, likewise, are chapters that deal with doom and gloom. You kind of get a sense of the wrath of God. The Bible in the New Testament, the last 27 books, concentrates on the grace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, and the peace that we can experience through reconciliation with Christ Jesus. Likewise, the last part of the book of Isaiah talks about grace, beginning with chapter 40. It talks about the love of God, the mercy of God, and how God looks out for us, embraces us, and how we can find peace in his arms even when life is spinning out of control. And for the children of Israel, Isaiah 40 would be a mighty comforting word because there they begin to experience the grace of God and the goodness of God rather than the wrath of God. So I want to share with you from Isaiah 40 to help you see exactly what it means to experience peace in God's arms. And I'm not talking about in the hereafter, but I'm talking about in the here and now. But to experience peace in God's arms, knowing that he loves us, he embraces us, he accepts us, he works with us, and he looks beyond us to meet our needs. So in Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 11, which is our key text for this week, 
we find these words. He, referring to God, tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. These words follow verse number one of Isaiah 40, which begins by saying to Isaiah the prophet, speak comforting words to my people, to my children, Israel. When we get down to verse number 11 of Isaiah 40, we are reminded that God receives us and loves us and treats us as sheep that he personally shepherds and he tends to his flock like a shepherd. To really understand this, you'd have to understand a bit about shepherding in the times of the Old Testament in particular. Because even in Psalm 23, when David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he goes through just a marvelous litany of things that God did for him personally. But David was also reflecting on his role as a shepherd as he kept his father's sheep. And as a shepherd, they would genuinely and gently love each and every sheep in the fold. As they would bring them in to bed at night, they might corral them inside of a fence or a cave or whatever they could find to give habitation to those sheep. Well, a shepherd would then lay down across the entranceway or the doorway of that cave. He would be the only barrier of protection between the sheep and whatever was going on outside in the world. Likewise, David thought of himself as such, as protector of sheep, as the one who would literally give his life that would literally sacrifice himself so that the sheep would be taken care of. But there's another important detail that you should know about shepherding from an Old Testament perspective, and that is before each sheep came into the gateway or the entrance where they would bid for the night, every sheep had a personal inspection by the shepherd. He would literally take oil olive oil, or perhaps some other types of oils, and put it on his hands or pour it on the head of the sheep and then rub his fingers and hands into the wool of the sheep, massaging the eyes and around the nostrils and on and on. The purpose of that was that there are some parasites who love to enter the ears and the canals, the nostrils, the eyes of sheep. Well, this oil would chase those parasites and insects away. And these parasites could cause death or maybe even delusion or certainly disease or dis-ease to the sheep. So to ensure that the sheep could sleep safely and soundly and continue to produce Deuce, as they were part of that fold, that shepherd would anoint their head with oil because the oil ran and chased away the parasites and the insects. That's why David made that statement in the 23rd Psalm, thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runs over. And so as David made the parallel between his career as a shepherd and thought about his relationship with God, who is his shepherd, being one of his sheep, David could see how God tenderly and genuinely, gently cares for each and every sheep. And when we look at Isaiah 40 and 11, even when life is spinning out of control, when things are spinning out of control, listen to what God says through the prophet Isaiah. He tends his flock like a shepherd. 
That's great news. Because it means that even when things shift in our lives, and when we don't know what's happening in our lives, and we don't know what's happening in our world, when we don't know what's next from day to day, from politics to family to whatever, to the economy, he that is God tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and he carries them close to his heart and he gently leads those that have young. That's what God does for us, even when life is spinning out of control. Is that good news or what? That even when life is spinning out of control, even when it feels as if God is angry with us, that we can find safety in the arms of our shepherd, who is God himself. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel mighty, mighty significant. Well, let's look at Isaiah 40 a tad closer. And I want to give you just a snapshot of the chapter. And I also want to remind you that there is a free PDF download that you can get in the description box below. Go and get it because it will help you to dive deeper into this study. There are discussion questions and there's also a little great little story there that will help you to pull some personal applications out as you apply this lesson to your own life. I want you to get that. So let's kind of break down chapter 40 of Isaiah and just look at some of the things we see about God. We learn in verse number one and two that God is merciful. We learn in verse number three, four, and five about God's glory. We learn in verse number six, seven, eight, and nine about the eternality of our God. Our God is not going anywhere. He's always been here and he'll always be here. We learn about his gentleness in verse 11. We learn about God's omnipotence. That is, that he has all power. Omni is all and potence is power. And that's in verse 10, verse 12, and verse 26 of Isaiah 40. When we get to verse 13 and 14, we learn about God's omniscience. Again, omni is all. And science means knowledge. So we're reminded that our shepherd, even when life <laughs> seems to be spinning out of control, he is fully aware of everything concerning us. Nothing catches him off guard. We also learn in verse 15, 16, 17, 21, 22, 23, and 24 about the sovereignty of our shepherd. Not only does he know everything, not only does he have all control, but he also has all power over all things because he is sovereign and he answers to no one. But then we finally learn in verse 18 through 20 and verse 25 of Isaiah 40 about God's uniqueness. There is none like him anywhere. So I want to challenge you to read this chapter in a simple translation, maybe the New International Version or whatever version you like, to really see all of this. And all of this is in the workbook that goes along with the teaching, so you'll be able to have that in front of you. But I just wanted to give you a snapshot, kind of an overview of what this chapter teaches us about God. And when you look at all of the aspects that are on this screen, this is why we can know that we can have safety in his arms, even when life is spinning out of control. We have a God who is merciful. We have a God of glory. We have a God who is eternal. We have a God who is gentle. We have a God who has all power, all knowledge, who is absolutely in control of all things, who is unique in and of himself. Listen, we can have safety in the arms of a God like that, even when it seems that life is spinning out of control. So what are the big takeaways, if you will, from this lesson and from Isaiah? Well, first of all, God wants us to know that he is a God that is beyond manipulation and the control of man. Remember, he is omnipotent. Potent, omnipotent, or omnipotent, as some pronounce it, meaning he has all power. He is omniscient, meaning he has all knowledge. He is 
everywhere at the same time, omnipresent. He is absolutely sovereign and he has all control of all things. So he cannot be manipulated by man. I don't care how people may even pray against you. No one can manipulate God against you when God is for you. But secondly, the big takeaway is that God is also gentle. He is a loving God. He is very attentive. Remember the analogy of the shepherd and the sheep that I gave you earlier. He attends to the needs of those who are his sheep. And when you belong to him, my friends, you have all of those benefits that you can't get from anywhere else or anyone else. That's the great joy of serving the God that we serve. Let's go back and review this passage again. I challenge you to write this passage down. Maybe put it in the notes section of your phone or put it on the refrigerator this week in this third week of our series to remind you that even when life is spinning out of control, you're in the arms of the one who has control. Because listen to it again, Isaiah 40 and 11. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. Mm. He gently leads those that have young. Hey, I want you to drop in the comments, what do you like about this verse? What speaks loudest to you? What did you need to hear that you found in this verse? Because I want to point out one thing that I didn't talk about earlier. I love that second clause. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. Imagine that. Being safe in the arms of God means that you're being carried by him, even when life is spinning out of control. And when God carries you, it means that you're closest to his heart. Hmm. What a beautiful picture that is. What a reassuring, satisfying, soul blessing that is to be reminded that when life is spinning out of control, he'll pick you up and carry you close to his heart. So I want you to drop in the comment section, what is it from this verse that speaks loudest to you? What did you need to hear from that? What gives you even more reassurance, even more faith to trust God from this verse? I wanna hear from you. So here's the main point of this lesson. I want you to take this away with you as well. Remember that if you are born again, you are part of his flock. Yes, you are part of God's flock. The Lord is your personal shepherd. Remember David, Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my, my personal shepherd. I want you to remember this week that the Lord will gather you in his arms. He'll hold you close to his heart and the Lord will gently lead you. I love this verse. I love this series. I pray that you're being blessed by it as much as I am in bringing it to you. Don't forget that there is a free PDF that goes along with this. It's a free workbook, my gift to you, to start your year off right. And I want you to get it so that you can follow along, so that you can share it with others, because there are marvelous discussion questions that are included with every section that we're not covering at this time together. But it's for your own, uh, your own time of meditation and devotion. But you can also share that with somebody else and have a group discussion. Start a text discussion. What did, you, what did you put for question number two? Or a group email or even a Zoom. Or get together with your friends and families or your coworkers and you could share this marvelous, marvelous teaching with other people. You know, our foundational verse for this series is what Jesus said to us. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. John 14. So I want you to memorize that verse and let that be a goal for these six weeks that we're working through this particular series called Finding Peace When Life Spins Out of Control. Let that be your memory verse. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. 
Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Hey, don't forget to grab the free PDF handout. You can find the link below. We love you all so much. I'm praying for you that you will know who you are in God and experience peace in his arms. Hey, make sure you tune in for our next episode. And if you've not seen part one and two, go back and check it out and get the free PDF workbook. Hey, I love y'all. Take care. See you next time.